Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm high value, they all want me. Probably the life of a product backlog item. Today we're gonna to talk about backlogs within Jira. Today we're gonna to talk about backlogs. First of all, what is a backlog? Well, this is all the work that is encompassing for a certain agile team. It's the full set of work for a particular team. Doesn't mean it's committed, it just means there's a potential that it can be done. In Jira, how we're gonna navigate the backlog is on the left-hand side here, this navigation bar, we're gonna put pick backlog. And now we're in our team's backlog. You can see here that there's some navigation panes here as far as you can close this, you can open it up, making sure it's easier to navigate through the type of work. Remember these, these conversations are mostly in when you're working with your team to define that work, that product owner, that scrum master, that development team is working together. This is kind of the view you would look at and kind of the navigation pane as well to kind of work with that team. With that in, with that in mind, keep it that th these UI features are for those types of events. You can see here, I'm navigating to epics. I can maybe search by epics, just view more details. I can create epics, or I can create more groups of work. I can search here for different things. Maybe I want to check, you know, what everything that says scrum, perfect, I can find there, find it with, within the backlog. There are also some filters on the top here. You can see here I can filter it by different epics, issues without epics. That's might be important to figure out, making sure we're encompassing the work under a bigger collector. You, different versions, you can see I have different versions here. You can cycle by this. You can also go to version panel where it shows the versions. Remember, this is a team managed project. I wanna keep that in mind. If you're not seeing this view, you might be in a company or enterprise managed project because they have a different view here where you can actually put, display both of these version and epic panels. Keep that in mind. You can filter by different issue types. You can have your own custom filters. I know in this video I do not cover filters, but if you have another video that covers more in detail of how to do that, but still for this one, you can add and manage custom filters. They can show up here, depending on what you want to look at. But as you can see here is that this is encompasses all the work, all the work for this team. You can see this is the sprint we have currently. Actually, it's not even started yet, but here's where we can start. This is where you actually start the sprint as well. You can look at insights, backlog insights. What have we done in the past? How are we gonna plan for the future? Again, reducing that volatility within the team by understanding by how we're planning based on past data. Always wanna base it on past data. You can see here different types of issue breakdowns and give feedback to Atlassian. For the work itself in this backlog, you can create issues here. You know, I need to, I need to do another task, another user story. You can add it there. You can actually, this UI actually is really nice. You can add story point. Maybe I, this is the scope of work after we talked about it. You can actually add epics here. You can add epics. What epics do I have? I only have one epic. You're kind of filling out those fields as you go. Really quick way to add stuff. A really quick way to add stuff. I actually prefer that to start the conversation and then backlog refinement. We can actually go into the details of each one depending on the, the, the sprint. There's a couple other features I want to mention here, emphasize. You can see here that these numbers are story points. You can see that the gray are in to do status. Blue is in progress and green is complete. So you can kind of see that overall, you know, what that looks like for that sprint. You can see assignees are here as well. Again, this in progress goes for the two. Here's the, the two and to do. This is where this number is coming from. You can start the sprint. <clears throat> you can edit the sprint. I want to edit the sprint here as well. This backlog gives, again, that view for customer duration. I want two weeks. I want one week. These are the dates. These are our sprint goals. Update. And when you're ready, you can start the sprint. I want to start the sprint. Let's go. We're aligned. Time to go forward. And then if you want to create more sprints, there's also an option here. You want to create a sprint. I got another sprint three here. Here are the dates. 
Again, you can add, create issues just like I showed above. Also keep in mind, this is a UI that you can drag and drop. Like for example, if I'm thinking, you know what, this one actually is higher priority than this, this user story, then you can also move that. I wanna make sure that you can, you understand that you can move that, you can you know, move around as needed. Again, very easy drag and drop UI. These are all the really important topics of a backlog. So I wanna ask all of you, what kind of filters do you use in your backlog within with your backlog refinement or when you're reviewing this board that shows value to you or these are important in that backlog refinement discussions for me i have my own opinions on what kind of user stories do i want to have those discussions about how can i tag them how can i have some kind of filter i can actually talk about those in the discussions what do you use what filters do you use in your backlog refinement or while you're looking at this backlog board